If you would bless the offering.
Good evening. Certainly rather have Jesus than anything. It's a sweet song. I, bad, like Kevin mentioned a while back, not really pay attention to the words of the song, but about the second verse there, that clicked in. I'd rather have Jesus than anything on this earth for sure. Uh, looking at announcements, there's not a, not a whole lot, but I did want to let everybody know that Ladies Auxiliary is on the 23rd this month, and it's going to be in the Fellowship Hall. And that's the only information I have on it right now. And then uh, Youth Sunday is going to be on the 29th. It says, to, as always, to see Scott if you need help getting somebody to uh, teach your class or to do your job. And Connor, you'll be doing this, so I'll go ahead and claim you now. So there you go. Now you know. It's time to go before the Lord in prayer, and we have a lot to pray about, and we have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, is there any spoken prayer request? I have one Just remember this. Just remember Pat's children and their special request. Thank the Lord for that. Yes. Good news. Let's remember Deb. She's still recovering. Yeah, let's definitely remember her in this prayer. Granddaughter. Granddaughter. Yes, remember these two requests. Let's remember these requests. Howard did make it home, okay. Let's remember this, Murphy kids traveling. Let's remember them. Let's remember this. Remember them. Yes. Remember Sister Ruby. And they're are they coming back tomorrow evening or Friday? Okay. Just remember Bobby and Robin as they travel and her test will turn out good. Remember her. Remember James 
Yes. That's three or four tonight that we've heard prayers answered. The Lord still answers prayers. There's benefit in serving the Lord. We've told everybody that that mark on your neck was Wayne choking you. I didn't know it was a seatbelt. <laughs> I, I apologize. I spread that rumor myself. <laughs> Wayne, you're off the hook now. It's public. Yes. I am thankful for that. Yes. Now we are glad you're you're okay. We'll talk about driving classes after church. Any other spoken prayer request? That's Robin's, Robin's aunt and her family. Let's remember them. If there's no other spoken request or there any unspoken, show them by just uplifting your hands. Everybody that can and will, let's gather around the altar. Ask Terry Willis, if you will, to lead us in prayer. Does anybody have a, have a song tonight? Or maybe a word for the Lord? I 
All right, remember Kevin as he comes. Good evening. Good evening. Be in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank the Lord for the beautiful day we've had. Uh, uh, very rarely we wear short sleeves in, in January, so uh, it was a beautiful day today, wasn't it? This evening especially. Thank the Lord for the day Sunday. Just uh, the whole weekend was good, and I just want to thank the Lord for for being with us and blessing us, and uh, God's really blessing our church, and I don't want to take anything of that for granted, uh, and uh, sure do, sure do thank Him for everything He's done for us. And um, all right, uh, turn with us in the Book of John, chapter number eleven. Very familiar scripture. <clears throat> it's about Lazarus, uh, the Lord raising Lazarus up, and. But there's some things the Lord just uh, kind of uh, brought to our attention today, and, and uh, we just uh, trying to follow the Lord. Um, all right, uh, John chapter number eleven, verse number one. We'll start with verse one. You stand with us, reading of God's word. Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was Mary which anointed the Lord, which anointed the Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. When Jesus, now Jesus loved Martha and, and her sister and Lazarus, and when he heard thereof he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that he, he saith unto his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. And his disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late, Sought to stone thee, and go south thither again. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve days in the, the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light. And these things saith he, after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you, and we thank you, God, for the reading of your word, and I pray tonight, God, that you would just uh, get us out of the way, and Lord, you'd use us for your glory and your honor. And Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you just uh, help us, Lord, to, uh, Lord, just uh, give ear to your word tonight. And Lord, if they be one, Lord, that's here and one that's listening tonight, Lord, uh, Lord, whatever the need is, God, uh, Lord, especially, Lord, if they're lost, Lord, that they come to know you as the Lord and Savior. But Lord, if they're if they're discouraged, Lord, going through a, a trial in their life, God, and they feel like there's no hope, I pray, God, that you would encourage them tonight. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. <clears throat> Very familiar scripture about uh, uh, Lazarus and the Lord raising Lazarus, and, and uh, as I as I'm reading today and, and uh, begin to. You know, think about uh, uh, there was uh, there's a whole lot went on in this chapter, and uh, Jesus had a purpose. You've heard me preach from this a lot, uh, several times in different, many different ways, and how Jesus had a purpose behind everything that he did, and he definitely had a purpose. The reason why that he didn't go right when Mary and Martha had uh, sent for him. He didn't go right there. He could have, but he didn't. He chose not to. And um, and there's there's a lot of questioning in their mind. Why didn't you why didn't you come when we called for you? Uh, but it wasn't his will for, for him to go right then. Now, there's a lot of times we'll call on God and we'll feel like that 
that God needs to answer on our timeline. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of put a time frame on the Lord if, if we ain't careful. We'll say, Lord, I need this happen today and I need this to happen then. God knows, God knows the timeline, but, but let me say today that, that, that uh, God's always on time. It might not be on your time, but He's always on His time. And His time is always the best. Now think about the Scripture says, uh, uh, God's ways are not our ways, neither His thoughts our thoughts. But His ways and His thoughts uh, are higher than the heavens or the earth. Now He did a lot of the miracles and He was doing this to strengthen their faith. They didn't understand that. They, uh, I believe in His mind, I thought maybe uh, come to Him when they, at the end of this day, They'll, uh, they'll have a whole lot more faith in me. And they'll believe uh, uh, that I am the Son of God. But also they'll, they'll believe uh, 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 the, the resurrection and everything's going to mean a whole lot more to them. And, uh, and so as, uh, as he told his disciples here in verse number 5, uh, he, well, in verse number, uh, uh, yeah, verse number 4, he said, This sickness is not unto death. But for the Son of, uh, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. I mean, you you say, well, now I st- that still don't make sense because Lazarus died, but Jesus knew that he wasn't going to stay dead. He said, "This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby." He knew he was going to die. And but he knew he was going to call him out of it and call him back. And so, uh, how, how the, you know the story, and, and I've, I've touched on a lot of different things about Mary and Martha, uh, but, but what, I, what I want to uh, bring out tonight is, is when, uh, after uh, he got to Martha, and he said, Thy brother shall live again, and she said, I know you'll live again in the resurrection. And he said, I am the resurrection. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. And he says, uh, 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 But he that uh, uh, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this? And verse 27, She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary your sister secretly, saying, The Master has come. And as soon as she heard it, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. Uh, the Jews then, which were with her in the house, comforted her, and they saw Mary. Uh, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out and followed her, saying, She go into the grave to weep there. They thought she was going back to the grave, but... She was going to Jesus. And when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And when Jesus saw her weep, and I want to focus right here. And when she saw, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, uh, which came with her, uh, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Shortest verse in the Bible, verse 35, Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which had opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? That's why Jesus, Jesus was allowing this to happen for those people. For those people that were questioning his uh, his his ways and questioning maybe his authority or, or questioning why he was doing what he was doing. That's why Jesus was doing, had allowed all this to happen, that believing they might believe. Amen. And so uh, when they come, therefore, uh, the Bible says that Jesus, in verse number uh, 38, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself coming to the grave, and it was a cave, and Stone lay upon it, and Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, uh, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. That's another reason why he was allowing this to happen. 
Martha believed in him, but uh, Martha believed that, uh, that he would live again the resurrection, but she just wasn't expecting him to live that soon. And so uh, Jesus here, he was, he, was, uh, he, was, he was doing this to open their eyes that their faith may be stronger. And he said, uh, I, I said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Notice what he said here. And I knew that thou hearest me always because of the people which stand by. I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. That's the only purpose, I, well, uh, maybe several purposes, but it was the main purpose, I believe, the reason why that God allowed this to happen, that they would believe on Him. And all the miracles that He did, He wasn't doing it to impress them, He was doing it to, to prove to them, no man can do these miracles except God be with him, and I, I'm, I'm He. But what I want to think about tonight is, is uh, in verse 33, when Jesus saw, therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews that was also with Mary, a weeping there, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. The Bible says he was groaning in the spirit. He was touched by the feelings of their infirmities. Her hurt, their hurt was his hurt. And I think about, we've heard it all of our life, that he was as much man as he was God but he was as much God as he was man. And right there tells us that he was in this old flesh and he knew what it felt like to be grieved. He knew what it felt like. And those of you that have lost loved ones and you, you feel like sometimes that nobody understands you, I want you to read that verse when you think about that nobody knows what grieving's all about. There's a man named Jesus knows exactly what it, what it feels like to lose somebody you love, to lose somebody that, uh, that you're real dear to. The Bible says that when he saw the others weeping, he started groaning. When he saw the grief on their faces, he began to grieve and he began to groan. Amen. I so Jesus knows tonight exactly how you feel. You may say, nobody understands me. Nobody in this world may understand you, but there's a God in heaven that understands you, and He knows. And, and listen, moreover, He is touched tonight by the feelings of your infirmity. When you're groaning, friend, He's groaning tonight because you're His children. Amen. And, and He loves His children. And, and so you think about it. Well, the Bible says when He comes, there to the place where they laid him he was still groaning the Bible says that Jesus wept Jesus when somebody is weeping it's not just a tear I believe uh, I believe it's uh, uh, or, or just maybe just a trickle I believe he was weeping he was groaning amen his heart was broke because his friend had died but not only that his heart was broke because his brothers and sisters around was was weeping and they were troubled I also believe that he was weeping for something else that he knew he had to do you may disagree with me but I believe that he was grieving because he knew that he was going to have to call Lazarus back from where he was the Bible tells us to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord. And I believe he's grieving because he, he knowed how good it was. And he, he knowed, no doubt that, that Lazarus was, was enjoying himself, but he called him back from it. And, 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 and no doubt there was a grief there to call him back into this old world. But he had a purpose behind it, didn't he? Amen. He had a purpose, and he has got a purpose in mind in your life. And, and, and we may, and even this story right here, you may say, well, there's a, still a lot I don't understand. There's a lot of things in my life, in your life, that we don't understand. I, but you've heard me say many, many a time, God never did say, understand me. I don't read in the King James Bible where he said, understand me. But many times, many, many times, he said, believe me, trust me. Trust me. 
Amen. He knows what's best. God, uh, God didn't owe, He does not owe us an explanation. He does not, we act as if He does. And we act as if God, I don't understand why you've let this happen, why you've allowed uh, uh, things to happen the way they have. But listen, God's way is perfect. He sees down the road with me and you don't, don't He? He does all things well. Amen. He does all, He's altogether lovely tonight. Amen. And friend, I'm glad that, listen, the things we don't understand, I'm glad He knows how to comfort us with things that are out of our control. We don't understand. But but you know He knows how to comfort us. Uh, He comforted Mary and Martha. He said, Thy brother shall live live again. And and, and he, he, He told them there this. Think about what He said. He said, Whosoever liveth and believeth in Me shall never die. Believest thou this? He wasn't just talking about uh, this, but he was talking about the the resurrection. I'm glad that uh, in Revelations the Bible says, "Blessed is he is he that uh, uh, had the uh, first uh, 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 partake in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power." I'm glad that when we die after sin, that second death ain't got no power about it. Amen. I don't have to worry about that second death. I don't have to worry about about dying. Uh, uh, I won't have to worry about leaving here. And the second death is is uh, you know the uh, there in Revelation uh, uh, twenty. Uh, there the great white throne of judgment and the dead uh, uh, were were raised and and judged. The dead being the lost. And uh, I'm glad that we don't have to be uh, uh, worried about that. Amen. If you're saved, you have nothing to worry about death. Amen. And, and listen, as God's people, I know sometimes we get, we get weary in, in well-doing and sometimes we get afraid and we get thinking about things. And I was sharing today with somebody how sometimes we get to thinking and, and it's human nature of how you're going to die. And, and, and you, you think about, to, well, I, I hope I don't die this way, or I hope I don't die that way. Well, there's a lot of people, you know, that, that, that has breathing problems. And they think about, well, I hope I don't, you know, smother to death, or I hope I don't I, I die a, a, a different way, or whatever. But I, let me say this tonight that puts all of our minds at ease. God's grace is sufficient. To see you across. To see you home. And God gives us the grace to save us. And He gives us grace to keep us. And God gives us the grace to die as well. He gives us that dying grace. Amen. And that dying grace, you'll feel nothing. I don't believe there's a sting to death. You've heard me preach on this many a time. There is no sting to death for a child of God because of 1 Corinthians 15. Jesus took the sting of death for us. Amen. He took a sting of death for us and we won't feel no sting. I believe that's why the Bible says Stephen was being stoned. He fell asleep. Amen. He didn't die. The Bible said he didn't die. And, and, and you think about it. A man being stoned, why, why he'd be a painful death. But the Bible says he fell asleep. I believe the angels of God came and got him just like they did. Lazarus, the poor man Lazarus, the beggar Lazarus. The angels come in, the Bible says, and carried him into Abraham's bosom. Well, I don't believe we're any different. I don't believe any of us are any different than they are. Amen. I don't believe though death has no more power over us. And death can't hurt us because Jesus overcome death. Jesus overcome death, and we have nothing to be afraid of. And I believe uh, Bobby and him, you sang, not afraid to leave this world. Not afraid. And boy, that's something to say, ain't you? That you ain't afraid. You know how you can say that? Because you have peace with the Lord. And when you've got peace with God, you're not afraid. Perfect love casteth out fear, the Bible says. And when you've got peace, you don't have to worry. That's in God's hands. Yeah, you, you ever been close to death and, and you get to thinking about it and you think, well, 
That's how close I could have left here, whether it be in a, a vehicle accident or, or whatever it was. Back in May, I woke up and they told me that I, they about lost me, you know, and, and it could have, could have been bad there, you know. I said, you about died. And then I got studying about something. I thought, that's how quick I, I could be in the arms of Jesus right now. I could be in heaven right now. You know, that death to a child of God is not a fearful thing. I mean, I welcome it. I, I mean, I want to live as long as the Lord would allow me. I mean, I do. I love life, enjoy life, uh, want to be here for my family. But, uh, but that's something that when it's my time, the Bible tells us that our bounds are set, Job said. Our bounds are set, and we're not going to cross till the Lord says so. But when it is, when it is time, there's nothing that's going to keep you here. There's no machines, there's no medication that can keep you here. When the Lord calls you number, you're leaving here. But you won't go until then, right? And so... Uh, I, I believe God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient for you, but God's grace, you know, when, when you know, I, I pray a lot with families, and I, I pray for the, the patient maybe that's, that's dying, and, but I pray for the family that God will give them grace too. There's grace for every need, just like we sang in the Red Book. There's grace, ain't there? There's grace for the dying, and there's grace for the living. And uh, I'm, uh, I, the primitive sung the song, uh, uh, God gives us part in grace. And uh, grace, when you feel like you can't make it. And uh, I'm glad that there's grace. Uh, it's a lonely life when you've lived with somebody and, and all these years and then you leave them, or they leave and, uh, and, and you're left alone. Uh, we've seen widows and widowers in our church and it's... it's um, it's a lonely life, but there's grace for it, ain't there? Uh, there's grace for it, and and uh, but as Jesus, when he went there to the to the to the place where they he, he was buried in a cave there, and, and the Bible says that he called Lazarus' name. Uh, if he had just said "Come forth," uh, everybody in the graves would have come out. He's still got that much power, amen. <laughs> One day he will. He just didn't that day, amen. One day he will, but that day he called Lazarus' name. Lazarus came forth bound uh, with grave clothes. So uh, that grave clothes is a picture of how, another picture of how he called me and you out of darkness. How he ca called us out of the bondage of sin. We had grave clothes on. We were bound in the chains of sin. But he said, loose him. The Bible says here that Jesus said in verse 44, Loose him and let him go. And that's what the Lord said when you and I, when we come forth, faith believing, and ask the Lord to save us, we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord said, Loose him, loose her, and let him, let him go. And I'm thankful for the, for the blessings of God tonight. Um, I, I've, I've thought, uh, you know, what we read in the Bible and what we read in God's Word, and, and uh, you know, we, we may think, well, uh, you know, we, the old devil will try to make you doubt, won't he? He'll try to make you doubt that there's even a heaven, and try to make you even doubt that there's, the Bible is even real. And, hey, man, am I making sense? He will. He'll tell you anything, won't he? He'll say, why, how do you know the Bible's real? How do you know there's a heaven? How do you know that uh, uh, there's, there's a place to go after this life? And how do you know your loved ones are in a better place? And um, I want to share this. Uh, last week, uh, about, uh, I think it was maybe a Thursday night last week, uh, I had a dream, and I dreamed of uh, Scott Bradford. And I dreamed that uh, we was riding in a truck together, and... and uh, uh, I had uh, I had a suit on, and he did too. Don't know where we was going, church or or a funeral. I don't know, but anyway, I acknowledged in my dream that uh, that that he had come back to see me from heaven. Because I I said I said how did you get here? And he said I don't know I don't know Kevidge. He called me Kevidge. He said I don't know Kevidge. I just know I'm here. And and I said Scott, you look so good. He was glowing. He had just a, 
just a, just a glow about him. And uh, I said, well, tell me about it. Is heaven everything that you imagine? And this is what he said. It's far greater than I ever imagined. It's far greater than I've ever imagined. Big old f- smile on his face. And we talked about people that... That that uh, and I can't remember all the people that he said that, but people that, that, that in my dream I, I I knew, you know, and and I can't remember all, but I did ask him if he, he. I said, have you have you seen Jesus? What does Jesus look like? And he he said, Kevin, he's brilliant, he's brilliant, he's bright, and uh, and and uh, Scott was glowing because of the brightness, and. Uh, I asked him about Wilma. I said, how's, how's Wilma? Have you seen Wilma? He said, Wilma's doing good. And the Bible says, we'll know as even as also as we're known. And uh, I felt myself waking up. And I, I said, no, no, no. I, I, I don't want to wake up. I want to talk to you some more. And then I woke up. But I, I wanted to share that to say this. If, uh, if heaven wasn't real, I wouldn't have dreamed stuff like that. I mean, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible and, and God's Word. And, and, uh, and I, I've, I've dreamed of others. I've dreamed of David Polly after he died. And uh, looks so good. And, and, uh, but anyway, uh, the old devil, uh, he tries to, to make us question things. But I, I wanted to bring that up to, to let you know that, that, that we need to be settled on Heaven's real, and we're going to see our loved ones again. Yes, amen. We're going to we're going to see our loved ones again, and and we're going to. Uh, I, I believe we're going to recognize people that uh, uh, that we uh, maybe didn't know here on earth. But I believe I'm going to recognize John the Baptist. I, I mean, the Bible. You know, we know him of him in the Bible, and and maybe not met your flesh, you know face to face. But I, I we're going to know one another. And there's a lot of things that the half has not been told. A lot of things about heaven that, that we, we still don't know. But I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God's prepared for them that love Him. But He showed us the deep things through His Spirit. Let me say, the Spirit of God has revealed enough to us all, amen, that heaven's real. The Spirit of God is revealed enough to us, and God's let us know enough in the Word of God that it's real and it's going to be good, and we just need to keep looking up because one day we're going to be together forever. How about that? Amen. 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 I'm thankful tonight that this is real. There ain't nothing uh, make-believe, things that's make-believe, things that's uh, made up, uh, they come to an alt. But I'm glad that the Word of God is backed up by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, and one day our faith is going to be uh, 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 ended in sight when we see the Lord face to face. I was uh, coming home the other day, and it rained real hard. It had been a pouring rain. And all of a sudden, the sun come out. And... uh, I got to looking for the rainbow because after a storm, uh, when there's rain, uh, the sun reflects, you know, on that water and it, it, it brings a, a rainbow. And, and I, I was uh, looking and I was thinking in my mind, where's the promise? Because the rainbow is a promise of God. And I never could find the rainbow. And God just uh, directed my attention to the brightness of the sun. And that sun was shining so bright, and it had been dark half the day, and the Lord just got a hold of me and said, the the promise is in the sun. I'm glad tonight that we we should just keep looking uh, toward the uh, the, the S-O-N. Amen? Because the promise is in the Son of God. And He told them, He said, uh, he said, I'll go away, but I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. And I'm glad that our loved ones that's, uh, 
that, uh, that's died in the Lord. The Bible says that they're going to come with him in 1 Thessalonians. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that you're, which are asleep. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. You say, I don't understand that. I don't either, but I sure do believe it. Amen. Amen. He says, will God bring with him for this I uh, 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 say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I wonder if we are the generation to see the Lord come back. But the Bible says this, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You say, preacher, now I'm not understanding that. If they're coming back with God and the dead rise first, what goes on there? 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 15. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us there that that mortal must put on immortality and that, that uh, corrupt must put on incorruption. That's that glorified body like the Son of God. Amen? And he goes on to say uh, that... Uh, uh, that that he said here, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I used to say, I hope I was in a graveyard uh, to see the, the, the resurrection takes place. But it's going to happen so quick, you ain't going to have time to stand around. A twinkling of an eye is faster than a blink, ain't it? Now that's fast. That's how quick we're going to be with the Lord. That's how quick. And this could be the year. That's another primitive song. <laughs> this could be the year we go home. Join loved ones around the bright throne. The signs are all pointing to the Savior's returning. This could be the year we go home. Amen. Ain't that a good thought? Amen. See your loved ones again. Get to talk to them. And I'm glad that this is real. This ain't something that we're just a dreaming of. This ain't just a wishful thinking hope. This is an assured hope. We really are going to go to heaven because of Jesus Christ. It's really going to happen. And these and our, uh, our loved ones that's with the Lord, and there's a lot I don't understand. And, and Tiffany asked me the other day, she said, well, that makes two you've dreamed of. It's worth suits. Is everybody wearing suits before we get her white robe? I don't know. But there's a lot I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. But I'll tell you what. They looked awful good. They're in their prime. I can't explain it to you all about it because the half hadn't been told yet. But when we get to heaven, we'll understand the half that hadn't been told. Amen. But the half that has been told, you believe it. You read God's Word whether you understand it or not, and you believe it. He told Nicodemus, or, uh, uh, yeah, Nicodemus, he said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. What, it, what marvel means is to wonder. Marvel not. Just believe it. And sometimes we'll say it and we'll wonder, well, how can this be? How can that be? But we just need to believe it because it's not God's will for you to understand it all. But it is His will for you to believe it all. Amen. And like that song the, the, the youth choir sings, I believe it all, don't you? I believe every word of it. Every jot and tittle of it, I believe it. Amen. I believe it, don't you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You. Thank You, Lord, for the promise, Lord, of a better day for the people of God. And I'm glad tonight you understand our groanings tonight. Those that... Lord, we're, we're grieved. We've lost several in our church just this year, but not just this year only, but throughout time, Lord, here we, we've lost a lot of people from our church. But, Lord, uh, they're, they're with you tonight, and, Lord, they're, they're uh, celebrating in heaven. And, and, Lord, I'm thankful there's coming a homecoming day. We'll be together forever. 
in a brand new body like the Son of God, a glorified body. I'm thankful we don't know what we shall be. And Lord, there's a whole lot about that body we don't understand. But little John said, we know not what we shall be, but when we know that when He, speaking to you, Jesus, shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. I'm satisfied with that. Lord, and I thank You. Strengthen and encourage every heart, Lord, under the sound of our voice tonight. I pray, God, folks, Lord, that's down and out and discouraged and bereaved in whatever situation. I pray, God, Lord, that you just, uh, Lord, lift them up, Lord, with the power and the glory. And God, Lord, that, uh, that, that they, Lord, will keep looking up because one day, Lord, our redemption draweth nigh. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.